at the thrift or from the free stuff. If you're willing to like take the effort, get something, clean it up, sell it. Isn't that American? Hey, how you doing? Thanks for downloading the show. Welcome to Garden Fork Radio. It's eclectic DIY. Uh, my name is Eric. I'm your host. I also have a YouTube channel by the same name. We talk about uh, what I hope are interesting things. Today, Nicole and I are going to talk about my EV charger problem, getting rid of stuff, and an odd increase in electricity rates, no, energy use at Nicole's home. So, Welcome, Nicole. Gosh, look at that, like, very succinct. That's all we're going to talk about, guys. We won't go off topic at all. Not at all. <laughs> Never here at Garden Fork. <laughs> to go off topic, I bought a new microphone. Oh. So I'm going to do some tests with it and the older microphone and see what you all think. I'm going to do like an A, B. I'm going to talk about something, and then I'm going to switch to the other microphone, and then I'm going to ask you all to email me because I'm lonely and uh, tell me what you think about the microphone. Okay. Are you going to tell us what kind it is? But you don't want to anchor us. It's a, a Rode, R-O-D-E, is a very good microphone company. And this is their podcasting mic. It's a dynamic. I believe it's a dynamic. It's, it's not the one that records every freaking thing in the room. Okay. Uh, which are beautiful microphones, but horrible for podcasting in your basement. So, And I remember to turn off the dehumidifier. I turned off the air conditioning. I had to tell my husband. I was like, I'll turn it back on. Just not right now. <laughs> so I had a interesting, uh, frustrating experience with charging my car that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, if you're a longtime listener, I own a Volkswagen ID4, which is in a fully electric car for about a year. Nicole, you have the Chevy Bolt. No, I've got the Nissan Leaf and we've had it. Sorry. No, that's all right. We've had it for a year and a half. We've got uh, 16,000 miles on it so far. So for most suburban and rural living uh, to charge your electric car, you're going to pull up to your garage or a, a post in your driveway and plug in from this, you know, housing unit, uh, a big cable and everyone seems to call that the charger. And it's really not a charger. What it is, is a, you've got this very, uh, you've got a 50 amp, 240 volt wire from your circuit breaker panel going to the back of this thing. And there's essentially a, a big relay in there that is capable of flipping on and off 40 amps of power, which then connects into your car. And in your car is an inverter that converts the AC to DC and then charges the battery. But that magic box, I've discovered, it doesn't really matter about the box. What matters most when you're considering buying one of these chargers is the software app that helps you control the charging. Oh, interesting. So I have a story about this. So I have a juice box and I bought it. I, you know, there were some good reviews. I liked, I liked the company's website. They're a multinational company, which will come back to haunt me later in this conversation. And the Eversource, our local power utility, was giving almost a full rebate for a charger and the installation. But it had to be one of three different chargers, and the juice box was one of those. And so I got it put in. Everything was fine. And for the rebate, Eversource has an agreement with you that you, you can either let them control your charger and dial it down when they need to, or they have more of a rebate system where you try and you do your best not to charge between three and 9 PM on weekdays, and they'll rebate you X amount of dollars per month on your electric bill. And so I opted for the second one. Okay. So hold on. I've got questions already. Okay. Is this charger in New York or is this up at that this is up in connecticut okay so this was a thing through connecticut where they right. would give you this okay All connecticut right. eversource okay got it so the other day it was a monday uh, sometimes we work on monday remotely and then we, we drive back to new york to brooklyn on monday night which is so nice because there's no traffic and the car wouldn't charge i plugged in the charger and there would be this yellow warning light the charger just has an led light it it doesn't really have any uh, data coming out of, you know, there's right. no uh, monitoring screen. 
And the app, what I had discovered was um, the app had self-updated. I think I touched it. I pressed on the app and it updated to the new version. And I couldn't get the thing to work. And I, I went online and there were, you know, of course, it was discussed on Reddit and someone said, well, they upgraded the servers at Juicebox, which is owned by NLX, N-E-N-E-L dot X. And now a lot of people's chargers won't charge. And I'm like, I don't have time for this. And so we went to my buddy's house who lives in the same town and he has a charge point charger, okay. which I installed for him. And it was flawless. So it worked just fine. And over the next month, we kept on having this, will it charge question. So it would charge intermittently? Um, sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't. And I was also, I had emailed the company and then I called the company and I got three different answers from three different people at the company. One of the people didn't seem to know anything and they said, oh, well, your local power utility has taken control of your charger. You need to call them. And the problem with that is when you call the main number for the, your electric company, you want to talk to the managed charge system people. Well, they don't know who they are. Oh, geez. And I don't, I love EVs. I'm a big fanboy of it, but I just want to warn you of my experience here. And there is a resolution at the end of this. So I had to go through these hoops of finally getting someone at the managed charge. And then they're like, well, we don't do the tech support. The software that would be controlling your charger because of a brown, you know, the risk of a brownout that day. Uh, that's we sub source that out to a software company in Brooklyn. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> and you call that number and you get a voicemail, leave a message, we'll call you back. And I'm like, that this is not bode well, you know. So, what I finally figured out was the original app I got with it was rated on Apple, uh, the app store on Apple at 2.5. And I'm like, okay, that's not great. The new updated version is rated at 1.5. Oh. It's 1.5 stars. Everyone complaining about the app. And I realized that the charger was fine. Eversource was fine. The app is so abysmal that mine was defaulting to smart charge. And I didn't have any smart charge parameters defined, like char start charging at midnight to 6 a.m. to get the cheapest rates or whatever. Oh. So as soon as I plugged it in, I would have to hit on the the app the it would default to smart charging and I'd have to hit charge now the button to say charge now right away or it would be stuck in smart charge mode and not charge. Oh, so geez. the power utility is fine. The charger, which is essentially a giant relay switch is fine. The app blows. And I'm like, I can't afford to not be able to charge. I mean, I can kind of hack it, but for my partner, my the camera operator, you know, she's too busy She with her world. She just wants the thing to work. Right. It's binary for her. <laughs> so I went out and bought a charge point charger. And I'll link to it in the show notes here. I do have an affiliate link with Amazon for it. Um, your power utility will probably give you a rebate. But the charge point app is so much better. So and I use ChargePoint um, all around DC. Uh, in fact, we have a place where you can charge for free at this this uh, like apartment building that has nice. like um yeah. So I'm all, I'm all about the free charging. Now, what's interesting is they had ChargePoint has int instituted this new. I, it's place by place. I can't, you're gonna like this, Eric. If you're sitting in the charge place and your car is fully charged and you don't come and move it within ten or fifteen minutes. They'll start charging you for parking. Yes, yes. Which that totally makes sense to me. But it happened to me. I didn't realize that I I would have moved my car, but I didn't know. So because I have alerts turned off on everything. So I mean, I guess operator error. But um, when you were talking about that on the Patreon page, your issues with the charging. I mean, what we do is different, right? We don't, I looked into getting the charger. It was two grand. There wasn't, and this was a year and a half ago, there was not any money to have the anybody pay for it. So we right. just got an uh, extension cord, an RV extension cord, super thick. And we plug in the charging hose. <laughs> yeah, to the, the big cable. The yeah. big cable to that. And we just put it over the um, 
over the sidewalk. We have like one of those little plastic things that goes over it. Um, and obviously when we're not using it, we move it out of the way yep. um, because we're not – also where we live, is it's low traffic. It's not – you know, we're not – we're seeing like three people a day walk by, not perfect hundreds. Yep. Um, but that has totally worked for us because we're we're not driving from like nine to eight every night. So yeah. even though it's the trickle charge, it's worked for us. Yeah, that's perfect. I was just so frustrated by it's kind of like when you have a piece of software and you call the company and they blame the computer. Oh, yeah. No, it's ridiculous. So now are you going to sell that? What are you going to do with your other charger? I will. There is a uh, a discussion forum for the Volkswagen ID4, and I'm going to put it up there. They have a for sale section. And I'll be honest, I'm selling it. It works fine. I think the app blows. Right. But if they're happy with the app, they, there's a lot of people that want a second charger uh, so they can put it in their garage somewhere else, uh, you know, their parents' house, something like that. And I mean, I won't get all my money out of it, but it's a, the, the new chargers are $600. My uh, neighbor, who's an electrician, wired the plug for us for about $500. It just depends right. on what your electrical physical plant is set up to do. And we were lucky that the uh, circuit breaker panel was very close to where we wanted it to be. But yeah, there is, it is a chunk of money. I've seen some podcasts that talk about it and they make it sound like it's tens of, not tens, but thousands and thousands of dollars just to install the charger. I mean, that's, that's like, that's not true. No. And there are a bunch of rebates out there, federal and state. Yeah, just they're have definitely, to do a little yeah. Shopping. Um, like, but I, I, it's just, so I wanted to say, do your, do your own research, uh, but I'll link to the one I really like, and I won't link to the one that I'm selling. <laughs> well, and yeah, the charge point is great because lots of places are using that. So you can just use your phone to like pay and move on. I love the the fast, the the DC fast chargers that are uh, run by charge point are really good. Um, there's a car dealer near our house that has one and it's not um anyone can pull in there and use it and it's clean you plug it in it works right away the you can either log in with your app or i have a little uh one of those little barcode rfid things that go on your keychain you just tap it to the machine and it goes boop and it turns on so i'm becoming a charge point fanboy here yeah well okay i maybe you should have started there who knew they weren't one i of, didn't know i didn't know were they one of the options the original three Yes, it was. And I don't, this is a year and a half ago when I bought it. I don't know why I bought the charge point. I mean, the, the juice box. I would also suggest not buying it directly. Um, I bought it through Amazon because you're going to need a receipt. And when I bought it, uh, juice box did not send me a receipt. And that was the first red flag because I tried to get a receipt emailed to me and it took like three days. Um, <laughs> was just like... Every time you say juice box, I think of this song. Do you know this song? Yes. <laughs> it's just in my head. Maybe you could put that in the podcast. Um, I'm not going to sing it for everybody, though. So this is my experience with that company. Uh, yours may be different. Um, you know, I just want to be careful that this is an opinion. I'm not, I'm not a factual expert about chargers, but my experience with it was not great, and I'm much happier with the new one I have. Good, good. All right. Well, good. Wow. Topic one done. Yes. Okay. What was our next topic? Oh, decluttering. You're more decluttering, which I love. Well, and you'd think at some point I'd be out of stuff, but I'm not. I mean, my mother-in-law died, and so we inherited a lot of stuff that you know we need to look through and um, and and kind of take care of. Um, so I'm going to give myself that that. <laughs> It's not all my stuff now. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I mean, I've been moving away from Facebook. I know you and I have talked about that, that we're not like super huge fans. But I am trying to be directed in my use of Facebook. And mm -hmm. in D.C., we have all of these um, all free groups. And I guess they, there used to be some kind of listserv that was like a all free listserv. And that, that closed down. And now. Um, it's migrated to Facebook. Yes. So oh, kind of funny, though, the all free people are rather pedantic and very uh, strict is the right word. 
<laughs> and so if you try and like put something else up or like offer a, a six pack of beer, oh, no, 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 no. You can get barred from the group. Oh. <laughs> I was just like, oh, for the love of God. Like, you know. So there's a new group. The rules. I know, the rules. There's a new group. And the new group is called Take My <laughs> ah. And it was actually started by two women named Ar- Erica Anderson, which is also funny. And I actually, when I first moved to D.C., lived with one of these Erica Andersons. She's from Montana, too. Anyway, the take my shit is great because they really don't care. They're like, you got it? And you people were like, you know, like yesterday. I had a, a blow-up mattress. Friends borrowed it. Queen size. Built-in. Built-in um, pump. It, really nice blow-up mattress that has sprung a slow leak, as they do. So in the middle of the night, you just got to you either either need to fix it or you need to <laughs> pump it up every night. So full disclosure, I was like, take my <laughs> pumped, you know, mattress, blow up mattress. It's got some problems here. Are the, full disclosure. Here are the problems. And it's on my porch. <laughs> if you want it, just come and get it. I'll delete this when it's gone. And I wow. woke up this morning. My mattress was gone. Nice. Yes. I mean, it would just... Like somebody else needed it. I love the I thing I love about these is like you have something that is no longer of value to you, but still has worth. And you can give that to somebody who still who needs it. So I had a similar mattress. And yeah, you just the full disclosure, you can fix them. The biggest thing about fixing an air mattress is surface preparation. If the if the surface you clean the surface, I would use like a lighter fluid like ethanol or something oh, okay and uh then you let that dry and you use the right kind of cement and you provide compression between the patch and the uh, mattress that goes a long way toward fixing it well so th- it's interesting because uh, one of my a good friends she bought two rei blow-up mattresses you know the camping mattresses yes at, we bought them at the thrift they look like a really good deal turns out that that's the frustrating part about the thrift is you just never know if it's good or not. Like, I don't know why somebody would give away something that was broken on the one hand, on the other hand, okay, well we could fix it, you know, but you kind of expect that it's going to work. And then, but you're also at the thrift. Um, My nephew just bought a typewriter at the thrift the other day. He was visiting us. Super cute. He was so excited to get it. And then the, I guess the engine, the motor was seized on it and we could have fixed it, but it was also like, the plug-in wasn't working at the thrift, so like we didn't actually try it out, but it looked pretty good. Um, we went back and got another one, so that was actually he was super excited to have a typewriter. <laughs> oh, I love typewriters! I know they're so fun, and my son uh, was super into it too. He he typed up stuff too, so I'm a huge fan of like this uh, thrift. I, maybe I've mentioned before that the thrift. Uh, a retail sector is the largest growing retail sector in America right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Like in our town in DC, we ha- have a couple thrifts that have been bought up by a chain called um, Value Village or Savers. And wow. they are a for profit. They're not not for profits, but they have an associated um, nonprofit. So, like when you give stuff to Value Village, you're apparently giving it to Lupus. So you get a tax write off, but then they sell it. Um, and of course, Goodwill is the OG. Um, but the the interesting thing is this consolidation in the market. Who knew that there and all of the value villages are are you know set up the same. It's almost like the Walmart of Value Village. Like you can find all the wood stuff clumped together, and um, all of the bags together, and all of the children's books together. Like they have a system. They've like routinized thrift stores. Wow, it's like Dollar General. Yeah, basically. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, it's fascinating. Mm. The curb works pretty good here in Brooklyn. <laughs> the cur- it's interesting. So I've had good luck with the curb, but then like I put something out and like the kids destroyed it and I got really frustrated. So I prefer the like, although ghosting is an issue where you like put something on these listservs and like like a lady was like, I have a bunch of chif- chips left over from a party, birthday party. I'm like, I don't need these chips in my life. Let's, you know, somebody else can eat my chips. Yeah. This lady is like, I can, I can come right now. Great. They're on the porch. Three hours later, they're still on the porch. Okay. Are you coming? Yeah, I'm coming right now. She never showed up. Why Why are you doing that? 
Yeah, that's a, that's a deeper conversation than Garden Fork can do. <laughs> right? I was like, okay, well, I just, at this, and then I get to the point where I'm like, it's on the porch. I'll remove this when it's gone. <laughs> that's great. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Craigslist can be a little janky for as far as dealing with that kind of thing. Because at least in the free section, there are people like that are saying, I'm coming right now, hold it for me, I'm coming right now. And then they don't. And a lot of them are collecting stuff and then they're going to sell it at their kind of this roving yard sale thing. But if they if they run out of time or they find something closer, they don't even bother to call you or text you. They just they just don't show up. Yeah, the arbitrage doesn't bother me at the thrift or from the free stuff. If you're willing to, like, take the effort, get something, clean it up, sell it. Isn't that American? Yes. Yes, I have a friend who uh, goes to estate sales and finds things and sells them on eBay, and she makes a living at it. It's, yeah. it's not an easy job, but she has learned. She has several niches. Uh, one of them is typewriters, actually. Oh. She has a beautiful typewriter collection. And she just has this knack for finding things and bargaining with people. Um and every I go, it's my best friend is married to this woman, and I go see them a couple of times a month, and she'll just go, oh, I found this thing, and I, I bought it for ten dollars, and one of them was a, uh, a stereo console from the '60s oh. with the uh, with the modernist legs, oh, I you love know, that it. come out at the angles, and the speaker covers were that kind of gold. It looked like gold thread was in the cloth that covers the speakers. Cool, and part of it didn't work and he she couldn't find anyone to fix it but she put it on i don't know ebay or something anyway and a guy in the neighboring state bought it and said i fix these up and sell them so she sold it to another person who's going to sell it but they know how to do all the you know it's analog electronics right. the transistors and the tubes and he sent her a picture of it working it was a beautiful thing yeah i am um one of my dear friends his one of his best lines is never be embarrassed to make a, an embarrassing offer like, no the worst they can say is no that's how we bought our little house in the country oh is uh, i made an embarrassingly low offer and the people said no thanks have a good life and then a week later i called them and i said uh my wife loves your house and i need to buy it for her and the guy laughed at me and then he sold me the house. Nice. I had to pay more, but um, not much more, right. actually. And well, so he felt like he got a better deal. Like, that worked. Yeah, he had a number, and I hadn't met it. And he finally just told me his number. But, you know, I just, I, I told him that my wife really loved the house, and um, I needed to buy it for it. And he laughed at me. <laughs> You're like, I promise I'm going to take real good care of this. The the funny thing is we're, like, best friends with them. Oh. Now. Yeah. So they live right down the road. Our dogs play together. So oh, funny. Is so they just moved down the road, or was this like their grandparents' house or something? No, they retired there, and they owned a lot of land around them. And one part, one piece of land happened to have this rundown house on it that they were going to donate to the fire department. Oh, and you're like, no, no, let me take it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let me live in it half the time. Hey, real quick, one easy way to support Garden Fork is if you're going to shop online and use Amazon, please use the link to our storefront. The link is in the show notes here. If you click on that, it'll open it up in your web browser. If you're on a laptop or desktop, it will open it up into your app, ideally if you're using the Amazon mobile app. Please shop locally. I go to my local hardware store first. If I can't find it there, then I go to the orange or blue store. If I can't find it there, then I order it online. So if you are shopping online, use our Amazon link, amazon.com slash shop slash garden fork. The link is also in the show notes. Thank you. All right, we're, we're digressing. Uh, no, um, that never happens. Okay. Myster mystery energy loss or use. Well, it's interesting. So we... Pepco highlighted for us that our energy use has gone up between three and nine at night. Oh. We haven't changed our behavior other than we have we're doing our test with the um, plug-in 
induction stove, right? We have the one burner and we have been using that primarily. And I have to say, like, I can sing the praises all day long. Really like it. They are great. Thing. Yeah, it's great. I have one. They are great. Um, So I thought maybe it was that, but my nephew, who's too super into energy stuff, we got out the kilowatt and he programmed my kilowatt. You know, we found out the price per kilowatt and and it's not... It really doesn't use that much energy. I was like, it actually had made me a little like, oh gosh, maybe we won't get the induction stove because it seems like it is a real suck. Um, energy suck. I mean, obviously it takes energy to make food. Like it's either gas right. or it's electric. Choose your own adventure. So just to clarify for people, a kilowatt is a kil- kilowatt meter that is really great. You plug it into the an outlet and then you plug an appliance into the kilowatt meter and it will monitor the energy uses of that device over time. It'll tell you exactly what it's pulling at a specific time, but also you can get a 24 hour reading out of it about how much energy and how many watts or amps it pulled over a 24 hour period. Yeah, and it's good for like, I mean, my original use case was just to see how much energy was being used by things on standby. Oh yeah, phantom Um, power. Phantom, yeah, so, um, and we, you know, we tap down on that years ago um so it, it appears that it is not the induction stove and i really can't figure out what it is do you notice any uh jumper cables going from your house to your neighbor's house maybe <laughs> no but i have had people <laughs> steal our water wow yeah that was great <laughs> city living <laughs> she's got a she's 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 got a hose out there. I could use some water. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, could you get your uh, family member back who's big on the energy uh, usage and check it out? Or, well, he actually just left. Unfortunately, I don't know. I guess we're also going to like to see what the next month brings. I mean, actually, I think I think Brent can look at the daily usage. So I should do, I should do that. Is there? Did you change your refrigerator habits? Did you put an ice maker in or something? Or No, no ice maker. No. I wish I had an ice maker. That's the only thing my refrigerator doesn't have. Um, you know, the kids are charging their iPads and such, but, I mean, that's not, you know. That's nothing. Mm-mm, that's nothing. And I wonder, it could also be that we were gone, and but it was part of the time was when we were gone. So I don't know. Yeah, well, I've got to do some sleuthing on this. Wow. I mean, where could it be bleeding off power? I know. It's just the weirdest thing. And it's from three It's from three to nine. It's not... No, it's like when the kids get home from school. So my inclination okay. is to blame them. Yes, of course. <laughs> well, you know, desktop computers pull quite a bit of power. Oh, interesting. Do they have a gaming computer or something? Or No, I won't allow that. But, you know, I think Brent got a new computer from work. Could that be it? Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. They yeah, finally. It's your husband's fault. <laughs> they finally. But that would be all day because he works during the day. I don't know. It's just, just very bizarre. Do you have mini splits? No. We have a whole house. Okay. Because uh, for anyone's, I asked that because mini splits have a variable power uh, heat pump in it. So it draws more power when it needs to cool more but if you're just in kind of a maintenance mode the the pump barely runs and the fan barely runs and then it ramps up when it needs to as opposed to like a window unit air conditioner or a whole house air conditioner it's either a hundred percent on or off and that's part of the energy savings you get from mini splits so huh it's binary well we just got a new um we have the whole house but the attic doesn't get cooled enough uh, we have a finished attic. Yep. Um, and so uh, we had a window unit that was like a train. I mean, this thing, and it wasn't that old. Anyway, so we wanted to get a quieter one. And they have those new U-shaped ones. Have you seen this? Yes. So we got a U-shaped one, and it fit like by the skin of our teeth. Brent was able to get it into the window. Much quieter. Um, even though it's supposed to be as powerful, it doesn't appear to be cooling as much. But we do like it overall. Quieter is key. Yeah. Just that white noise of a window unit air conditioner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, you know, when people, it's our guest room and then also where Brent works. 
Um, so he's further away from the air conditioning, unfortunately. But um, it's good for his brown fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have an announcement. Oh. Um, before the pandemic, the camera operator and I bought tickets to go uh, fly to London for a little quick week, at week, you know, four day trip or something to London. And then the dumpster fire happened. Yep. Um, and now uh, Virgin Air was super nice. Virgin USA, Virgin America Air, that's called Virgin Atlantic. Virgin Atlantic, uh huh. Was great in that they allowed us to just hold on to the tickets and we had to use them by the end of 2023. So we thought, okay, we'll go in the fall. So at the end of September, the end of this month, we will be in London. And if any of you live in London or the area, maybe we could get together. Maybe we could, uh, um, I don't drink, but uh, we could go to a pub or uh, have some tea or something. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, How fun. Or just meet up in the morning for a scone. I'd love a scone. Now I want to go make scones. Yeah, that's great. So uh, radio at gardenfork.tv. There's, um, I've talked... I think I talked about this. I've been watching these narrowboat canal videos of these narrow boaters going through the UK on the canals. I love those. And there are two canals in London that are connected. And one of them is right near our hotel. We're staying, we're staying near Hyde park and, um, in a holiday inn, if you could believe that, but it's a really well rated holiday Inn and clean, I need a clean room. So they had high ratings for clean rooms and, so we're just going to walk up there and the nonprofit, I think it's a nonprofit that maintains the canals now. And they have these walking tours of the different parts of the different canals. And you can print out this PDF or just like it on your phone. And it talks about the different points of interest along that part of the canal. So we're going to do that. Uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're around, maybe we could get together. I call you just send me an email. It's radio at gardenfork.tv. Are you really only going for four days? Yeah, we the logistics are a little hard with uh, my uh, the camera operator's job. She okay. is a powerhouse at a company here, and it's hard to get away. All right. Well, I'm glad so, you're going at all. You're going to have a great time. Yeah, I besides going to visit my sister, we haven't been anywhere. <laughs> hey, check your passports. Make sure they're up to date. Oh yes, we already did that. Okay, um, good. And I actually had to renew mine. It was uh, we had to. It was pretty easy, but it's, it's just like you got a lot of steps to go through. But anyway, if you're around London, let me know. That'd be fun. All right. Awesome. So Nicole and I are going to stick around for the after show. We're going to talk for 10 or 15 minutes about some interesting topics, some deep dive. Uh, I don't know what yet. Well, <laughs> How's that for trying to get you to sign up to become a patron? <laughs> we don't know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> we're fascinating people, though. <laughs> um. If you're interested in that, I also post a lot of photos during the week and a couple of videos as well. And also coming to the Patreon app, which is what I use, there's going to be a discussion group on the app for Garden Fork patrons. We tried out using the Discord. You can use Discord or Patreon. And I think it's a little, I think Discord is a little off-putting to some people. Some people love it. Some people don't. And uh, I haven't talked to my Discord group yet, but I think we're going to put the brakes on that and test out the community on the Patreon app. So how's that for a pitch, a mumbly pitch? <laughs> um, well, I could never get the Discord to work, which is embarrassing. Yeah, it's it's it was Discord was created by computer coders. So and there's not a lot of human interface design baked into the thing um whereas this community tab i'm hoping is kind of more facebook like okay yeah i'm excited about this this will be good because i do like yeah. to interact with people yeah cool oh we're going to talk about on the after show a piece of paper that landed on my roof on 9 11 so there you go that'll be interesting all right so thank you everyone thanks for listening i love to hear from you it's radio at gardenfork.tv. Nicole, thank you. Yeah. All right. Talk to you soon. Garden Fork Radio is produced by Garden Fork Media LLC in Brooklyn, New York. 
Our executive producer is Jimmy Goose. For more information about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes, visit hollowbooks.com. The music in the show is licensed from audioblocks.com and uniquetracks.com.